everyone. My name is Nilofa and I'm an associate editor with Eastern Book Company. It is my proud privilege to welcome all of you to the virtual book release of Anomalies in Law and Justice, authored by Justice Ravindran and published by Eastern Book Company. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all our distinguished panelists who have taken out time from their busy schedules to be a part of this event and also to all the attendees who have logged in from different parts of the country. The schedule for today's event is as follows. Welcome address by Mr. Sumit Malik, Director of EBC. Book release by Justice Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India. Address by Justice Venkatachalya, former Chief Justice of India. Address by Justice Lohoti, former Chief Justice of India. And address by Justice B.N. Krishna, former Judge Supreme Court. This will be followed by uh, an address by Justice Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India. Finally, we will have a final discussion uh, on the topic anomalies in law, which will be moderated by Mr. Arvind Dadar, who is a senior advocate. And finally, we will have a response on the panel discussion by Justice Ravindran, who is also the author of the book. And we will end the webinar by a vote of thanks. I would now like to call upon Mr. Smith Malik, who is the director of EBC, to give his welcome address. My Lord, Justice uh, N. V. Ramana, the Chief Justice of India, my Lord Chief Justice Venkatachalaya, my Lord Chief Justice R. C. Lahoti, my Lord Justice B. N. C. Krishna, my Lord Justice R. V. Ravindran. It is my privilege and honor to welcome such distinguished personalities to this function today. None of them require an introduction. Chief Justice of India and his judgment in Anuradha Basin upheld the freedom of speech and expression through the medium of internet, holding that internet shutdown must satisfy the test of necessity and proportionality. Katachalaya, he called the Bhishma Kitama of the Indian legal system, continues even at his age of 94 years plus to influence our thinking and development of legal thought. Even a 10 minute interaction with him allows a person per se, explains the nature of proceedings and relief under public interest litigation. In Antile, he observed that courts are as much human institutions as any other and share all human susceptibilities to error. Chief Justice <clears throat> Lahoti is one of the most respected Chief Justices India's had and the thought are unparalleled. His judgment in Dawi Bora on the doctrine of precedence, concept of stare decisis and per incurium judgments is seminal and still holds was one of the most erudite uh, judges on the Supreme Court bench and his contributions did not step, uh, stop even when he stepped down from the bench. He has been part of very law uh, in fields as diverse, device, diverse as the Mumbai riots, finance and business, financial irregularities, data protection and the use of technology and artificial intelligence in the field of law. He was on the bench with Chief Justice Lahoti in the Daudi Bora case. His own judgment in state of Karnataka versus All India Manufacturers uh, Organization in 2006 was an important case on the practice and procedure to be followed in case of PILs. Apart from laying down the law on res judicata in case of PILs, it also clarified that an instrumentality of state he also imposed exemplary costs on the state government for five lakhs for frivolous arguments. Justice Ravindran, <clears throat> I can safely say, has been one of the finest civil and commercial judges to have appointed to the Supreme Court. Economic Transport Organization in 2010, where he expounds the concept of subrogation and assignment is seminal. Many of the cases decided by him on arbitration remain the leading cases on that subject. He has many articles to his credit. And of course, today we celebrate the release of his book. Sri Arvind Datar, senior advocate, has over a period of his practice not only mastered constitutional law, 
and tax laws, but alongside has been involved in so many projects relating to access to justice, use of technology in the law and others. Interestingly, in Madras Bar Association case, where the constitutionality of was argued by Mr. Datar and the unanimous judgment of the court was delivered by Justice Ravindran. We are privileged to have all of you with us today. In this new world of technology and artificial intelligence, which allows for self-publishing, publishing on blogs, etc., the question is, is there still a role left for publishers? At EBC, as we celebrate 75 years of being around, what we have learned is to understand what the legal profession requires and what our role can be in fulfilling that requirement. To us, we believe that our role is to bridge the gap between legal information and knowledge and those who consume that legal information and knowledge. To be effective in our role, it is important that materials or content that we produce is authentic, accurate, and reliable. Also, we have continued to innovate over the years to keep ourselves relevant. In 1969, when Mr. Suren Malik graduated from the Delhi University, having studied by the newly introduced case method, he realized there's a need for faster reporting of Supreme Court judgments. Thus came about the innovation of Supreme Court cases. As you are all aware that there can be no second edition of a law report and it must be got right the first time. Prompt, accurate and complete has been our philosophy, which we've adhered, adhered to since then. And we understand and recognize our responsibility that the honorable judges and the bar repose on Supreme Court cases. As soon as publishing shifted to desktop publishing, we at EBC adopted it and shifted our publishing from hand composed type to software design typeset to digital printing. The latest innovation in the field, print on demand has gotten to the publishing industry before laser printers printed aircraft parts and human hearts. EBC was amongst the first to introduce a legal research database on CD-ROM in 1996, which was less than 650 MB then. And now the SEC online web edition has over 10 terabytes of data, 4 million documents covering over 250 jurisdictions. Even though we believe that the printed book is here to stay, yet for the tech savvy, EBC's EBC reader uh, platform is ready and has over 350 books and we add new books to it every day. The SEC online blog on which we report happenings in court, law schools and the like now has over a million views and 4.5 lakh visitors every month. To bridge the gap between what is being taught in law schools and what are the skills and knowledge required to be a successful legal professional, EBC has launched its latest innovation, EBC Learning. It has been a wonderful experience working with Justice Ravindran on his book. We thank him for the opportunity. Judges, for those in government and public service and the common man too. It is sincerely hoped that these lessons are read, understood and imbibed and it helps strengthen the rule of law and values and traditions that India stands for. Once again, I welcome all of you today <clears throat> and we look forward to a fantastic uh, session with just uh, with Mr. Dada and the panelists. Thank you, sir, for your insightful words. Next, I would like to invite uh, Chief Justice Ramana to release the book by holding it up in his hands. And I would also like to request all the panelists to please hold up the book in your hands so as to commemorate this occasion. Uh, thank you, Justices. It is indeed a momentous occasion for all of us to have this book released in the presence of so many eminent personalities. Thank you all. Uh, next, I would like to call upon uh, yes, Justice. Wait, 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 wait one minute, please wait. Okay. Chief Justice, do it. Okay, sorry. Thank you, sir. May, may I request all of you to hold the book up again, please? Yes, sir, please hold the book up again. We will take a screenshot of this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to call upon uh, Justice Venkat Chalya Ji, former Chief Justice of India, uh, to say a few words on this occasion. Honorable Justice uh, Ramana, Chief Justice of India. 
जस्टिस लाहौटी श्री अरविंद दातार जस्टिस श्री कृष्ण जस्टिस रविंद्रन श्री सुमित मालिक भतेजा डिस्टिंगिस्ट पैनलिस्टमैन जस्टिस रविंद्रन वास्ट एक्सपीरियंस and legal erudition as a lawyer and a judge inform these pages of this book there is a fund of information on every topic dealt with by him in an eminently readable in this eminently readable book the most distinguished significant aspect of his judicial personality is that despite his great familiarity with legal theory and legal principles he brings to bear upon the subject a pragmatic approach of pragmatic solution the ideal justice is a never receding horizon and as a concept is an invitation to a debate on the irresolvable issues of man's eternal quest and to conflicting social philosophies providing practical solutions to the conflicts of men is the primary concern of the art and science of adjudication i may recall what roskell said in a very eminently readable article law lords reformers are reactionaries he said much of the common law and virtually all the criminal law is a blunt instrument by means of which human beings are governed and subject to which they are required to live and blunt instruments are rarely perfect intellectually or otherwise by definition they operate bluntly and not sharply and for this is ravindran judicial philosophy accords broadly with this this philosophy the constant problem in constitutional adjudication is one single continuing theme how to steer the living stream of law between the dangers of rigidity on one hand and the dangers of formlessness on the other the canadian idea of dialogue in constitutional adjudication is a great experiment personally i have great regard for justice ravindran in his article musings and management he reveals a, a side of his personality being tough and being gentle he 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 refers to raymond chandler's fictional detective marlowe and uh, he is somebody asked him somebody asked him how can you be so hard at the same time so gentle he said if i wouldn't hard i would not be alive if i wouldn't hard i wouldn't not be alive if i were not ever gentle i would not deserve to live If I am not gentle, I won't deserve, deserve to live. If I am not hard, I would not be alive at all. This is the dilemma which every administrator, every judge will face some time or the other in his life. This book is a beautiful book. I have written a long foreword. I think that is the hundred hundred first foreword that I have written to books in in my thirty years of retired life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful occasion. Chief Justice Ramana has honored us all by releasing this book, and uh, I I must congratulate Sumit Malik for the great contribution they are doing, they are providing to the spread of legal uh, literacy and promoting good books and good literature and law. Today the scenario is totally different thanks to publishers. Uh, imaginative publishers like sumit malik and others thank you very much for inviting me it's an honor to be with you today i cherish it thank you uh, thank you justice for your enlightening words uh, next i would like to call upon justice lahwati former chief justice of india welcome sir we would be honored to hear a few words from you on this occasion thank you lulufar i deem it a matter of privilege to me to be 
participating in this function with the honorable the chief justice of india as the chief guest and the bhishma pitame of the judiciary honorable justice venkat chaleya and sitting with him as a panelist i admit it with a matter of pride and pleasure that whenever i get an opportunity of meeting justice venkat chaleya i have been nothing short of touching his feet and touching his feet has been a source of inspiration to me throughout <laughs> brother justice ramindran justice sri krishna senior advocate mr datar mr malik and all your colleagues and all the audience participating in this beautiful function which is sober and it gives its own implications i would confine myself on this occasion to a word about my esteemed brother justice ravindran and two words about the book <coughs> justice rv ravindran rv r for short as i know him every judgment authored by him has been a specimen of accuracy certainty and exemplification today i am a little amused to find the book compiling his writings by him having been given the title of anomalies it was somewhere in the 2001 or 2002 late apj kalam the then president of india visited the supreme court on the request of justice b n kripal the then chief justice of india at the high tea during informal discussions i asked kalam sir what is your message to us the judges of the supreme court quick was the response kalam sir said something like this among 124 crore people of india you are 24 judges of the supreme court can each one of you be a role model to the people of india and then we all dispersed ever since then i have been searching is there someone whom i can cite as a role model judge and i found the answer in rbr his first judicial quality is that he is a gentleman he listens with patience considers by conscience answers wisely holding the scales of justice even even in perfect balance he would not care for the aftermath whether a judgment would please someone or would be criticized by anyone much less whether applauded by the public sitting in the court he never raised his voice never lost balance never exhorted never made any comments much less criticized anyone he would not deliver sermons neither by words of mouth nor by pen he believed his duty was to judge the case the facts of the case and not to judge the persons implicated as parties in the case which privilege belongs exclusively to the court he would meet people but maintaining a safe distance i wish if he had the opportunity of dealing with more subjects and pronouncing his dicta thereon i am happy that what he could not do as a judge is being done by him as a learned author <coughs> this book anomalies has something for everyone belonging to fraternity of law and justice the entrants of the legal profession newly appointed judges would find a lot to learn from the anomalies even the seniors would find enough in the book to further improve themselves a law professional whether lawyer a judge an arbitrator a mediator a conciliator would all have valuable tips to draw upon 
the book shall be read and reread by all those who wish to be rbr the anomalies would go a long way to recreate refresh and restore the much needed judicial values i would beseech my lord the honorable chief justice of india to have this book prescribed as a textbook in judicial academies including national judicial academy and question answer sessions to be held on the subjects dealt with in the book for this book is not just theory it is practical wisdom related to law and justice one thing which i can say with confidence about this book is that this book is in this book there is not a word not a sentence which has not been practiced by rbr every chapter ne every page of the book is studied with jewels of wisdom recently having come across some strange orders passed by some courts i happen to ask rbr are the fundamental rights not being stretched too much and too far like a rubber band the answer which he gave to me needs to be read by every judge dealing with the fundamental rights issues he said the more we expand the fundamental rights the more we dilute them such like books are precious gifts to the present and then intellectual legacy for the future generations i with these few words record place on record my admiration of the book and i am indeed i gratefully acknowledge rbr and ebc for making me available a copy of this book which i have selectively read but i may candidly i may tell you i can't afford to read the book i shall have to study it thank you very much uh thank you so much sir your speech was extremely thought provoking uh next i would like to call upon justice shri krishna ji former judge supreme court of india uh sir please say a few words on the occasion of the book release thank you uh the honorable chief justice justice venkat jalaya former cji justice uh, lahoti former cji brother ravindran mr datar the team from ebc surendra malik samit mathumit malik uh, nilofer and bhumika it's uh, indeed a happy occasion for me who has been virtually rendered a house prisoner for the last more than 12 months or 13 months to be able to meet all my colleagues at one stroke now a few words i i mean really few not more than 5 10 minutes few words about the author and few words about the book now the first time i came across brother ravindran was when some of his judgments in the uh, madhya pradesh high court came up in appeal before the supreme court and i must say i fell in love with them at first sight because having been used to all kinds of rubbish being written this was really a very pleasant and a very happy occasion to read a judgment which not only made sense but taught me exactly what the law was now after that when i was in the supreme court and i had almost come to the end of my tenure i was pleasantly uh, in surprised when ravindran walked in one day and said hello to me and he had been appointed i had a very short tenure of sitting with justice ravindran that was really pleasant short and sweet as it was several quality that i noticed that he was a very pleasant gentleman both as a human being and as a judge i did not find him ruffled by some of the uh, very abusive and abrasive lawyers in the supreme court he also had a good quality namely meticulousness even though we could sometimes make short orders 
he would take the trouble of reading the order thoroughly, making sure that all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. Punctuation was right, capitalization was right. And finally, the order did convey exactly what the court wanted to say. Whenever he wrote a judgment uh, as a junior judge, I had no need to even read it a second time because I knew it would be dead right. And all that I had to do was say, like a tathastu brahmin, I agree and sign it. That is a good thing. Thereafter, he was a colleague on the committee which we headed for uh, making uh, changes in the arbitration law and institutionalization arbitration. And his uh, contribution there was invaluable. Although, much to our chagrin, very few things were really accepted by the government, as usual. Finally, I'm happy that he's one of my co-arbitrators. In fact, I chose him to be the president of an arbitration, international arbitration tribunal. He was a little reluctant saying, how can I be your senior? I said, no, you are much more than what I am. You deserve to be the president. I'm sure that this will inspire younger generations of lawyers and judges. Now, two, three words about the books. What the gentleman is, the book reflects. Now, these anomalies of law is the result of his vast experience of <clears throat> law, both as a studious academician and as a practicing judge of wherever he has found <clears throat> holes in the law, kinks in the law, oppressive points in the law, which he needs to highlight. He has highlighted them sufficiently for the benefit of the lay public, for the benefit of <laughs> legal fraternity, including the judges, so that these pressure points, these irritations can be removed and justice rendered to the public at large. I very much appreciated his broad spectrum of uh, dealing with the subjects, whether it be anomalies of the laws, corruption, then about administrative law, then his kind guidance to lawyers, counsel, junior judges, senior judges, how to write a judgment and what needs to be emphasized in a judgment. This is really a, indeed a classic textbook material and I'm sure the Honorable Chief Justice will take up the suggestion made by Justice Lauti and have it prescribed as a study material for youngsters to become good lawyers and better judges. Let us hope that you will have more and more judges like Justice Ravindran and that we will have more and more books written by him and may the good Lord give him more power to his pen to produce this and may also hope that EBC will have the honor of publishing more and more such books for the benefit of all and all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Justice, uh, for your insightful speech. Uh, next, I would like to call upon Justice Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India, to address the virtual gathering. Welcome, sir. Uh, good morning to everybody. Honorable Justice M. N. Venkata Chalaya, the Bhishma Pita Maha Indian Judiciary, oh Honorable Justice R. C. Lohoti, Honorable Justice B. N. Sri Krishna, Honorable Justice R. V. Ravindran, Honorable Justice B. Sudarshan Reddy, Senior Advocate C. Aravind Dutta, C. Sumit Malik, my senior and colleagues from the bench and members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen. I am overwhelmed to be in the presence of the judicial grades of India. They have been extremely kind to me in my whole journey so far. Your blessings have brought me so far Justice Venkata Chalaya has been a role model for me since my student days. At this age of 94, he still remains as a powerhouse. It is humbling to be in the presence of these luminaries. I am free from stage fear, but today it is different. Standing before you stalwarts makes me a bit nervous. So I deem it a matter of great privilege 
to be part of this book release function for number of reasons my association with justice ravindran relates back to several years and i am fortunate enough to have such close acquaintance with him today i am running the risk of being called a bias judge by none other than justice ravindran this is what happens when you speak frankly about a person who is your guide and inspiration he is humility personified i was left with very little choice when i agreed to be part of this event and speak about both the book and its author justice ravindran's judicial wisdom needs no introduction particularly to this august gathering he is an amalgam of unwavering commitment to the rule of law strong believer in the independence of the judiciary having a deep sense of morality and scholarship par excellence his tireless work towards reforming our judiciary has been critical in shaping our jurisprudence he came from a humble background with no family pedigree in the profession trained under sri s g sundaraswamy a doyan of the karnataka bar this is ravindra has the ability to relate to people and issues around him this is ravindra's judgments are of great value not because they are replete with western jurisprudence or rich in legal jargon but because of their connect with today's indian context and his people judgeship was never an office for him he never tried or made an attempt to project himself as the savior of the judicial process he continued to be humble and believed that the office which he held did not exist for himself he discharged his duties with distinction and commitment to the people he believed in the dictum as lord god dunning said i quote that the best judge is known is one who is less known and seen in the media unquote <laughs> the example five all that is great about our institution like many of my colleagues past and present i have always been a great admirer of his judgments which are of simple language intelligible and clear to the common man through his judgments he has set a standard of excellence which demonstrates that law can be a force in society to bring out the best in the community and make it a better place to live let me turn to the book now the book title anomalies in justice is an attempt to explain to the layman that the law and the legal system is still evolving and that it requires more critical thinking to resolve issues which have persisted in the system for a long time through this book jesus ravindran undertakes to explain in simple terms various deficiencies in the law which required to be overcome so the common man does not lose faith in the judiciary and the legal system in the foreword this is vikata chalaya wrote that the book preempt the need for any extraneous foreword but his admiration for justice ravindran compelled him not to deny his opportunity to write to record his tribute to this eminent work these words speaks volumes about the books as well as the other before i open the book i thought i will read the entire book at some other point of time leisurely due to the facility of time but the moment i started reading the book i could not resist myself from completing it the narration is captivating the book is divided into two parts the 
first part is addressed to the common man along with judges and lawyers the second part is specifically addressed to lawyers and judges the second part is specialized on its outlook and addresses certain complicated issues which have subsisted for decades this book covers procedural as well as substantive law relating to civil procedure electoral reforms and the alternative dispute resolution mechanism the treatment given in this book is scholarly with a mix of both academic and practical knowledge it caters to both legal professionals as well as the academicians the first chapter sets the tone for the entire book wherein justice ravindran identifies certain existing anomalies in the law there is no doubt that indian law is filled with old legislations enacted during the british rule which have lost their significance in the contemporary india one such example which he highlights relates to the files under the ipc which have not been amended since 1860 he concludes the chapter by noting that there are many such examples which need to be considered by both a vigilant bar and the bench one aspect which caught my attention is the part addressing the adr mechanism in india this is ravindran has years of experience in that field he has the distinction of setting major contentious arbitration across india as well as in the other countries recently in the case of vidyadrolia i had an occasion to deal with an area of arbitration which has troubled the indian courts since the enactment of the arbitration act 1996 initially when the court started interpreting the 1996 enactment it was seen as a intervention by courts at every step of the arbitral process such an approach was detrimental not only to the autonomy of the parties but was also a reason for increasing judicial backlog it was justice ravindran who for the first time in the case of bhujalal recognized such excessive interventions as being detrimental to an arbitration friendly image of for india it is only after his judgment that the supreme court and other high courts followed the trend to interpret the law in an arbitration friendly manner ultimately the noble intentions laid down in bhujalal were fully realized to the recent amendments to the arbitration act and subsequent judicial interpretations if i may say so justice ravindran played a significant role through his judicial pronouncements in helping india realize its true potential in the liberalized economic environment in the final chapter this is ravindran again navigates through various issues affecting arbitration practices in india from the lack of professional vigor to delays the book addresses this concern in great deal which must be looked into by all stakeholders so as to achieve the full potential of arbitration in india the author lastly concludes that an efficient arbitration system in india will not only strengthen trade and commerce in india but also increases the confidence of the international community in indian dispute resolution process the fourth thought of justice ravindran to make india arbitration friendly which was against the established precedents at that time is commendable his efforts had the desired impact of enhanced is of doing business in the country and tremendously cutting down in litigation time the general distrust among the business community and regarding litigation was adequately addressed to this various to various judgments of him this is ravindran's judicial capabilities is known to everyone i have no hesitation in describing this is ravindran as one of the legends who have increased the prestige of the supreme court of india ravindran increased the public faith in the judicial process is through his eight right judgments even after concluding his service as a judge of the highest court he continues to be passionate of serving the public cause this 
one volume speaks volumes about its lifelong efforts for working towards public interest. For me, it is a great honor to be considered worthy of releasing this beautiful book, which brilliantly radiates the wisdom of Justice Ravindran. I congratulate Justice Ravindran for coming out with this book, which the need of the hour. I urge him to write more diverse topics of his expertise and share his immense knowledge with the world. Before I conclude, I wish I share a message that he sent at the time of my appointment as the Chief Justice of India. I quote, Dear Justice Ramana, congrats. Best wishes and blessings. These are difficult days, challenging days, testing days. Being a Chief Justice requires courage to act, commitment to the cause of justice, concern for the common man, tact to deal with the and obtain the cooperation of the brother judges in addition to the qualities expected of a judge. You possess all of them in abundance. Let the Almighty lead you to a purposeful, meaningful, and successful tenure." Unquote. I feel that this message is in, indeed the roadmap for my journey as the Chief Justice of India. I shall treasure this message forever. I wish him good health and all best for all his future endeavors. I congratulate the publishers to publishing this book. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Justice. We are indeed privileged to have you here. And on a lighter note, we are also happy to see you in, in blue, which was the informal dress code of today, which we had decided. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Next, we will have, uh, uh, I would like to call upon uh, Mr. Arvind Tatar uh, to begin the panel discussion. Welcome, sir. My Lord, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Venkat Chalaya, former Chief Justice of India, Justice Lahoti, former Chief Justice of India, Justice Sri Krishna, and Justice Ravindran. It is indeed a Great privilege for me to be asked to be the moderator of this session. It is, it is as Justice Chief Justice Ramana mentioned, it's a rare honor to be on a panel of so many eminent jurists at one place. As a student of law, I still remember the dissenting opinion of Justice Venkat Chalaya in the Antule case. I remember so many landmark judgments of Justice Lahoti. Justice Sri Krishna and Justice Ravindran, which on a personal note, I may say that he really set the trend for the tribunal, the tribunal series of tribunal judgments after we appeared before him in 2010. It's a great privilege. As Justice Ramana said and other speakers have said, this is indeed a great book. And I'm not saying it for the sake of just saying it, but this book really deserves to be studied and digested. Uh, it has got uh, before uh, you you start this uh, panel, yes. uh, no, no further discussions, I will be present for the entire uh, discussion uh, which I watch. I okay. am I am on the screen, but uh, I don't want to express anything. I, but I will <laughs> okay. clearly all your uh, uh, views, and I will note down that much I want to tell you. Please, no, no, it is a great privilege that uh, you are able to sit through, and uh, of course, what we have done is. Uh, because there's only time, another 35 minutes are left. So no, no, in the... it's okay for, for us, me, there is no time limit. So if you no. have a time limit for it, it's for you, but I will sit sometime, no problem. I will sit completely. Yes. Because thank you. Sir. It's, a, it's a very rare opportunity where you get uh, stalwarts like Venkata Chalaya, Lahoti, and uh, Sri Krishna, Justice Reddy, Ravindran, you, all of you are great people. I must listen, all of you. For me, including my name is a really humbling experience. I've seen all these eminent people. But now what we decided, sir, is that we will have a panel discussion. And we thought that the book has covered so many topics. In fact, as you mentioned, anomalies in law and justice. Justice Ravindran has analyzed 15 anomalies in law and justice. So it will be difficult to take all of them. All so right, we decided as a panel to first to take up three issues. One is delays in uh, disposal of cases, which is a perennial problem and which has to be addressed sooner or later. Second is technology and law. And lastly, the issue of public interest litigation. So we thought that we'll take up these three topics and then discuss it, get the views of everybody. Okay. I will start with this issue of delay in disposal. 
Recently, in the Lok Prairi judgment, when the issue came up about appointing additional judges under Article 224A, we had the occasion for various high courts to get into the data. And I must say that the National Judicial Grid data is an outstanding piece, outside website, giving extensive and very detailed data. Out of the 50 odd lakh cases pending in different high courts, we found that five high courts are more than 53% of the areas. Similarly, in the subordinate judiciary, five high courts are more than 54% of the areas. So the areas are concentrated in the certain areas which are required to be addressed. As Justice Lahoti suggested, the problem of delay is separating the subordinate judiciary. There are different reasons. It is also different in the high courts and the Supreme Court. Fortunately, Supreme Court, the problem is not so serious. As Justice Lahoti mentioned, the areas have been brought down to about 60, 70,000 cases as compared to a vast number pending earlier. Now, sir, in the context of uh, delay, I would first like to request Justice Lahoti to one of the questions which has come up when I broached this topic with other uh, members of the bar and other judges, retired judges. One standard response is to create more judges, to create more fast track courts, but this has not really addressed the problem. Uh, would you say, sir, that one uh, repeated suggestion was to extend the retirement age from 62 to 65 for high court judges? Would you say that that is a good suggestion? I wanted to put this controversial question to you, sir, to Justice Lahoti. Uh, in my opinion, yes. Not only yes, it is a must. If we increase the age of retirement for the judges of the high court, it will serve two purposes. First, we will have a, an active judge, active experienced judge at the prime of his maturity, a, a mature judge to dispense just, continue to dispense justice. Yesterday during that discussion, I told you that 15 years after my retirement, I can work as an arbitrator, record evidence, hear arguments, prolong arguments, and construct my awards. Why I cannot act as a judge? So that's the question. The age of retirement must increase for all, but it must be uniform for the judges of the High Court, the Supreme Court. The second and more important thing is if the age of retirement is the same for the judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court, a lot of red race would stop and the dignity of the office of the Chief Justice of the High Court would be restored, which is eroding day by day. Third, now that's all. This is two things about the age, age of retirement. You have really mentioned some very strong comments you have made, sir. May I request Justice Sri Krishna to give his thoughts on this issue of because there has been a proposal from time to time that make the high court judges from 62 to 65. Everybody has got good health now today, unlike the earlier days. What is your view, Sri Krishna? I agree with what Brother Lahoti said. Yes, by my experience, I have noticed both at the bar and as a judge of the high court and even as a judge of the Supreme Court days, most of the chief justices, whichever place they are in, are always turned toward the north. Now, hoping that someday they will land up in the court. Now, their judgments get colored by what the Supreme Court will say. Now, this is total erosion of the judicial independence. Now, as a judge, you decide what your judicial conscience tells you. If the Supreme Court says you are wrong, you are wrong. That's all. Right. You leave it at that. But then to always try and please somebody in the Supreme Court is absurd according. And that is what is really oppressive. And because ultimately you have your three more years that you get in the as a judicial in the judicial career. That is not going to make much difference. In fact, this suggestion will make a High Court judge feel that he is independent. In fact, if you remember, one of the Calcutta High Court judges had retorted to the Supreme Court a remark saying the Calcutta High Court has judged it, does it again, and he pointed out and said, the High Court is as much a constitutional court as the Supreme Court and not a subordinate court. Now, this, unfortunately, this feeling is gone because of this kind of disparities. And I totally agree with this. Honorable Justice Vikachal, I would like to say a few words on the 62 to 65. You've been a Chief Justice almost 30 years ago. So, would you still say that oh. it's time to make it from 62 to 65? Two, two eminent judges have spoken. <laughs> and um, I think it's a matter of great uh, uh, satisfaction that uh, this is the view I expressed 
in the first meeting of the Chief Justice's conference in 1993. He said, all the judges must retire at the same age, but not 65, but 68. <laughs> the, when, you, can't, you can't get judges. Somebody mentioned what, uh, what uh, Chief Justice mentioned, what President Kalam Sahib said. Kalam Sahib was, uh, I, he and I, before he became president, worked, worked in the same building for two years. I was in the first floor, he was in the second floor. He was the advisor to the Prime Minister. I was chairman of the Constitutional Review Commission. Every weekend we would meet. And um, one, I may re reveal that one chapter on science and technology, future of science and technology in India in the in our report was uh, under the, by the inspiration of that man's mind. See, what I say is, these things are absolutely necessary. Why do you retire just at 62? The, in those days, the age of uh, uh, the lifespan of a human being in India was 27 years. It is 67 years now. And, uh, and some of the judges are well kept, well disciplined people. They live long. In my own example, I live longer than I deserve. <laughs> and, uh, and I, 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 I think that I think they're just, uh, they, we are honored, all of us are honored by the presence of the Chief Justice of India. It's a matter of serious uh, implication that, um, um, that just both Supreme Court and I could just the atmosphere in the in the that uh, all these chief justices the high courts must be treated as the exceptional judges of the supreme court and the chief justice of india will be at liberty to request one judge sitting judge at the supreme court to go and work as chief justice of the high court and ask a high court judge to come and work for a term or uh, whatever and whatever terms the chief justice thinks to sit in the supreme court I mean, that, these are all perhaps a very ideal uh, situation. May not be practicable in, in implementing it. The resource has it. But simple thing is, as two letter judges of the Supreme Court have said, 65 years. Uh, uh, it's a, in fact, I went to the uh, yes, went to the uh, to the to four eminent lawyers of this country, requesting them to accept judgeship of the uh, Supreme Court. I went to Deepangar Gupta's house. I went to Andhya Rujana's place in Mumbai. I went to, um, uh, who's, who's that? Uh, just a settled one's son. Atul Settled Chagla. Atul Settled One. Atul Chief Justice. All of them declined. Then I, then I declared that you have lost your right to criticize the Supreme Court anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> In my time, if Arvind Datar was around, I would have caught him. <laughs> yes, Justice Sweetson, I wanted to say something. I wanted to say this in, in connection with what Justice Venkatachale is saying. Provision, look, we are all oppressed about the areas, areas when Bombay High Court or Calcutta High Court or Madras High Court or any of the High Courts. Now, when I, I'll give you my experience. When I was about to retire, the then Chief Justice of India in asked me and said, will you work in the Supreme Court for two years as an additional judge? I'm recommending your name. I declined because of my personal reasons. I wanted to come back to Bombay. I made a counter offer and said, you appoint me an additional judge in the Bombay High Court. I'm prepared to sit there. I don't want to do arbitration. I'll be able to do whatever I did. And I, there is no branch of law that I have not done as a judge. But then the judge, chief judge said, brother, you will become the junior most. I said, what does it matter? I'm interested in doing work. I'm fit. And as the judge said, the said, I am also 80. Now, 15 years I've spent, the best of my life I have given to the private parties for, uh, as they say, for a handful of silver. Now, I could have done this to the institution from where I came out. I could have done to the bar, high court. If I had sat in the high court, there was nobody in the high court who did not know me. And they would have given me equal respect whether I was the junior most or not. Now, I don't know why this is. In fact, I remember when I was a lawyer, three, four of these most senior lawyers, like Paleen Ariman, Soli Sorabji, 
and two others, I don't remember who they were. They had offered to work as ad hoc judges in the city civil court in order to control this. But then people didn't accept it. These are good suggestions that somebody must do this radical thinking, otherwise we are not going to solve the problem. You increase the number of judges, there is the law of diminishing returns, it applies equally to, to judges also. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, just Vikantil. As you mentioned, your age of 94 is definitely, we are really blessed to have you. And I'm sure that, uh, that the next book of Justice Revenue also will be released in your presence and just Ramana will be there. All of us also will be there. That's my sincere prayer. Now, sir, this is as far as uh, the increase in age is concerned, this will require a constitutional amendment. Recently, we had this uh, judgment of Lok Prari where they've recommended just a slaughter. Wanted to say something, please. No, only only half a minute, half a minute. No, no, please. If, if the age of retirement ah. for the judges of the High Court and Supreme Court becomes the same, the horse increase, I can assure you the Chief Justice says would stop taking rounds of Delhi and you will have the option of choosing the best dehors the scenery, and you have to persuade them to come to Supreme Court. This I am telling you with confidence from my experience. Choose it's the not. best and persuade him to come to Supreme Court. He will not. He will not be willing to come to Supreme Court. He will have to be persuaded to come to Supreme Court. That's what it should be. Yes. Thank so, you. So, so one suggestion is to make High Court judges up to sixty-five. The other, just Venkatchal has said. That everybody will retire at 68, keeping in mind the uh, the energy of all of us that we have at, uh, at 65 and 68 and so on. That's very good. Now, I only wanted, since all of you have been Chief Justice of the High Court, you've been in the Supreme Court, what is your view on implementing 224A? When we did this low query case, only four instances where additional judges were appointed. I know Madras High Court were two cases. In Madhya Pradesh, there was one, but 224 has still not been activated as such. Any reasons in your term as to why this was not done? Can just Sri Krishna or uh, Naughty throw at 12 o'clock? I made an offer, my offer was not accepted, so I came back here and here I am spending my time doing a lot of arbitration, helping somebody other other and making a lot of money in the bargain, which I could have used at the same time I would have utilized for doing work in the high court for whatever last round salary was. Yes. You are muted, sir. See this 224A. Yes. It's a fantastic idea. And uh, I would a little modify it, borrowing from Honorable Justice Venkatachalliya. 224A should be utilized in such a way that instead of calling on the retired judges, the sitting the consent of the sitting judge should be taken. Those deserving good judges who are des who, have, who, who have worked very fast and knowledgeable, that they will continue to act as additional judges of the court until the vacancy has been filled up. This is one point. Second, for 224A also, the appointment shall have to be done by the president. Now, if we can persuade the president, the government, the executive, to make appointments under 224A, then why not the new appointments? I would suggest that the honorable Chief Justice of India would kindly consider it. The honorable judges and the CGI are reluctant to talk to executive. What is wrong in the two constitutional functionaries having a dialogue from time to time? From newspapers, I learned that 50% vacancies are lying in the high courts. And many recommendations made by Supreme Court are hanging fire at the end of the government. Why should not? the two constitutional functionaries have a dialogue and sort out the issues. Why correspondence? So this is my request. 224 is a good idea, but the way Honorable Justice Venkatachalaya puts it, it's a much better idea. And I would suggest that the new recommendations which are pending for a long time must be sorted out by a dialogue, not by just writing letters. Yes. So, I, so I think the net uh, conclusion is that um, as, as a judge, High Court just retires at 62. He continues under 224A for some more time till the vacancies are filled up. That is the, the suggestion that is made because even in the Lok Prairie Union of India Bar, gave a very positive affidavit and said, yes, 
for people who are retired and the idea was to select judges in their specialization suppose in a particular court more criminal cases are pending then retired judges who are specializing in the criminal area can be asked to continue yes, sir yes. so now can we just move on to the next uh, topic which i suggested was which is bothering all of us is technology and law now i remember coming back in march for the holy holidays to chennai i never imagined that i would be stuck in one city for 15 days because but fortunately thanks to zoom hearings virtual hearings we have been now used to a new method of working i think all of you are conducting arbitrations with, or from all over the country and the world from your uh, respective houses and chambers uh, i just wanted to know as far as technology and law is concerned uh would you recommend that some kind of a hybrid system to continue because i don't see this going away and even if assuming the pandemic goes away and we come back to normal the will it not be a, would you suggest that we have a continued hybrid system say 3 days of virtual and 2 days of physical what would you recommend i would ask just venkat chela have been at the forefront of recommending technology you have recommended six sigma and so on so i would request you to mention about the new method of virtual hearing Although there are classical purists who say that there should be a physical hearing that makes, I I would um, if I recall in the law quarterly review, there's a an article by an American senior lawyer. I think you kindly trace it. The title of the article is title of the article, gentlemen the lordships. The title is. gentlemen their lordships the team is how appeals are argued on either side of the atlantic sir raymond leverstadt committee had members of supreme court judges the american supreme court judges and the house of lords members they went into the question of hearing and and this article by a senior lawyer from america gentlemen their lordships that's how that the sir announced into the room he said the essential morality of the process in common law system has to be maintained and to the extent technology will promote it to the extent it can for example it could become impersonal you just you see for example cross examining a where i witness in the court it can't be done on um, online this part of the work must be there is the personal the morality of the process and the impression emotions things like that court technology may develop itself into a state where it can be it's amenable to such kind of use also you can see the person in three dimension holographic <laughs> image and things like that and things are it will happen sooner than you think it's possible yes gentlemen i will tell you within the shortest possible time the leap of technology will be such that we don't know where we will land and uh, I, you must take care that the essential feature of a common law system is the morality of the process that's what that article said that the american law and said i found myself unable to uh, equal myself to the the great art of personal presentation and then a written brief in, and i think he said this 100 pages of closely typed the written argument may not sometimes be sufficient to shrug of shoulders of the queen's counsel in the court see, uh, see the way in which the communication is done to the extent it can be maintained well it's good but the, you see you, the limitations and the the emotional communication caution in technology must be recognized and to the extent it will not affect that it can be utilized of course a time will come when it will be more than personal hearing you can see the man in three dimension three dimension all the judges who come in all sizes and shapes and their works are all seen in the public that stage will not work and the the capacity of india to assimilate technology is very high see medical technology dentistry uh, ophthalmology New technology occur in America in the within three months. It's in Bombay. The the degree of uh, somebody somebody was explaining. A man was running a bullock cart, and suddenly he stopped for a uh, booth uh, for cashing his cash uh, credit card and uh, went into the booth and uh, took money and came back and continued in the bullock cart. 
this is the kind of degree of absorption of technology. These are all very, very interesting questions. But theoretically, yes. To what extent, it will depend on, on the experience of lawyers and judges. I don't think uh, it can be uh, as a present technology that we use. A personal appearance before a judge, the effect of it is totally different from what you address remotely through online. But uh, I, I, I told you yesterday that I would con confine myself to your point one and point three in the overlapping areas of that. Yes, please, if you can elaborate on that. Yes, of that. I'll only take a few minutes to present please. that point of view that will also involve, you see, technology yesterday is different from technology today. Justice Sri Krishna dealt with that. Um, there is a seminar in which uh, uh, last year, I think two years ago in Bangalore, uh, for um, artificial intelligence. What is this machine intelligence will do? You leave your telephone at home, your uh, mobile at home, have a dinner in a restaurant, and uh, have a, 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 a dish there. How was the dish? The, the 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 kind of data that gets into the thing is a very 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 difficult thing to imagine how it will take shape and it can water preference can be monitored water, water choice can be predetermined it can influence the whole course of our life. And that's a uh, the Supreme Court. I very briefly tell you my, my ideas of how you can discipline the trial system. These suggestions which I am making are not for the implementation at all. Sorry, sir, we have lost you, sir. I think we have lost you, sir. Yeah, to be put to the fire of well, that we said that uh, an old woman had surplus supply of beetle leaves every day. She would eat over 10 or 20, but she would put all the fresh stock under, underneath the present stock. And continuously he was eating only the stale ones. So we can't... Because the the person but only to have the feasibility, economic viability, and the tenability determined by an expert group. You have lost this is the life with specialist systems. I think I just. We can't hear just a bit. Sorry. Yes, sir. So you're muted, sir. Please, I you on Ah, yes. Please, sir. Am, am I audible? Yes, now, sir. We, we lost you for a couple of minutes, sir. And uh, this is only to be put to, before an expert group of judges, experienced judges, lawyers, and systems men. It is generally said law is too important a matter to be left alone to lawyers and judges. Today it is very, very significant that you should be, the systems are not merely computer, computer men, it is the systems men. And uh, you see there is some organization, there used to be one gentleman, Mr. Sri Krishna will know, Perhaps he must have, uh, that gentleman must have troubled Sri Krishna also. For, for the one Mr. Bhagwan Das Rayani in Bombay. He used to call it Society, Society for Fast Track Justice. And there's one group called Daksh in uh, Bangalore. 
They've done yes. enormous work on, on, on this uh, area. Crucial idea is, is when, the, when the banks, when banks, it's the first time started in Italy, when banks had the problem, they had a, a good bank and a bad bank. I would, I would not use those good and bad words. It's a new, new bank and the old bank. The new bank is to carry on the current business Correctly, and the old bank to handle the problems of the uh, inherited problem. You, what you want is the new court on and after a particular date. Try it as a pilot project in one district. In the fifty percent of our work in the high courts and the trial courts are in in um, in five states. Five states in the trial court. Seventy percent of the work is criminal with the work. Trial state. 30% is civil work. There's a dramatic reversal of the proportion when you come to the high court, where 70% is civil work and 30% is criminal work. That itself is an indication of what is happening in, in, in the, the, the trial, uh, trial court. Crucial idea is to have a new court on and after a particular cutoff date. The, the fresh cases are filed in the new court on an assembly line basis. And that assembly line will say which court, which case, which type of case requires faster treatment, for example, a matrimonial matter. Where if you make it more than six months, there will be no, nothing left in the marriage at all. Custody of children. You remember uh, Lord, uh, a letter of the barrister to the Lord, uh, Lord Eldon. Everybody knows that story. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this minor was uh, a couple who came to your court. In, in, the, in, the, in your busy schedule, you not, now you have attained majority. Therefore, <laughs> you don't take the trouble of processing it as much. There's a, there's a world, yes. not only just the, the story of law, law you, you put this into the system, and that will say the adjustments in the main case are not given by the judge presiding officer, it's by the man systems controller who will meet, will have the meeting with the Parties on both sides. Fix a schedule for that case. If you file it today in October, first, first week, you will get ready for this thing, and systems men will provide it to the computer a slot for it. They will assess the uh, man hours requirement, time requirement, and make it three times that so that uh, to accommodate possible lapses in complying with this thing. You And the systems men will provide you all that. Supposing you are not able to do it in the month of October. So he gives you a slot in alternate. Now in advance, after the issues have struck the conference, and both the lawyers will decide how the case should proceed, but I give alternatives for in the case of their non-compliance. And, and this is done by the controller of the system. The judge will only deal with interlocutory date, give dates or little interlocutory matters and urgent matters, interim matters. The main matter is under the control of the system. This is to be done. put it in one district, in in one state, under the supervision of the, the chief justice of that state and the judge who is familiar with this thing and some systems experts. Try it. Just give it a trial and you will produce enormous results. In fact, this is exactly what I told Arvind Dasar's group when he invited me some 20 years ago to inaugurate his Palkiwala Center. There I said, I, under the capital six sigma in judicial proceeding, we, we, I dealt with that, and um, that was published by the, um, the National Judicial Academy. And then the system should declare what kind of cases should have time limit? Custody of children six months, divorce matter six months, or whatever the time you think the systems will say, the lawyers will say, the judicial, the, the judiciary will say. And I think, and then ultimately, a, a case put on the assembly line, uh, fix an ultimate thing. Two years is the maximum period for the pendency of that matter, depending on the logistical support that you have from the judiciary or three years, but no case should fill over that period. Though uh, other cases could be reposed on, this is possible. Yes. In the country, Lord Chancellor outsourced the 
This is the kind of time, man hours that you require for your witnesses. This would, and secondly, outsource 30% of judicial work to lawyers uh, record, as commissioners. They'll record evidence for you and give it to you. And, uh, and lawyers will say which witness will will be uh, evidence will be recorded by the commissioner, which requires uh, uh, oral cross examination in court. And this uh, this will have to be decided. They must develop a culture. Lawyers must develop a culture of, uh, of uh, a culture of justice, not contem <laughs> merely as uh, contenders of uh, opposite parties. Then 30% of the judicial work is to be outsourced. 30% of the judicial work is to be online, filing of a written statement, uh, uh, objection to this thing. All this could be online and not come. The point I wish to make is, the loss of man hours, loss of productivity, attributable to un, unaccounted unaccounted for adjournments. Parties going to court, lawyers going to court, coming back. There are 18,000 courts, there are 22,000 courts in the country. People go there, come back. The loss of man hours and loss of productivity. Somebody has estimated 150,000 crores. 1,50,000 crores if you estimate it at 300 rupees per head uh, per day. Uh, of course, the accuracy of that is, is to be verified. You see, a part of it is spent for the welfare of lawyers. You see, lawyers can be reasonable if it, if it, is, if it is suitable to them. Without the uh, active participation of the legal community, you can do nothing. Yes. In the adversarial system, uh, well, this is the most important kind of uh, thing. And you have to try these things. Don't put it in, into practice unless it's it's. Uh, yes, no, I agree, sir. We should first try it as a pilot project in one or two districts. Uh, and even then... even before a pilot project is done, have an expert people to assess. Uh, the, it may raise some cynical eyebrows. Well, it's yes. not possible with the kind of culture that lawyers have in the country or judges have in the country. There may be so many reasons they'll point out. All that I wish to appeal to the judicial community, give it a try, because yes. all of the things we have tried is gone. 
Yes. We, the, the fast track course, it yes. didn't work. We had uh, the, that thing, so many statistics, so many reports. And uh, then we are trial work is, for example, you will the recall uh, tenancy agreement, uh, unprotected tenancy. And tenancy is admitted. When a suit is filed, you must have a system by which you have a decree nisi and the show cause why it should be made and not be made absolute. And a mortgage debt, where is the question of going through all this kind of thing if the mortgage bond is there, privacy, the time has expired and the suit for either sale and sale of security or foreclosure. Where yes. initially you make out yes. a case for a decree, decree in ISI and you issue why it should not be made absolute. Yes. These are procedural things which, which require serious consideration. Otherwise, you can't handle it. You can't yes. handle it. Everybody will throw up his hands and nothing can be done. And thirdly, massive training program for legal, paralegal, and court officials for working out the system must be undertaken by the National Judicial Academy. It is not that everybody should go to Bhopal. National Judicial Academy can uh, interaction with the state academies all over the country. And the, the, that you should invite, that's the complaint that was made against me, that I chose Bhopal, I chose Bangalore first, and uh, requested one of my colleagues uh, just to come and inspect the place. And the way he was driving, the revenue secretary was in the car. He said, sir, this land has already been given to somebody else. And I think there's some confusion. The chief minister is not aware that there is some already. What you are inheriting is not land, but litigation. He didn't even go to the place. He turned the car back and came and said, don't touch them with the bath power. <laughs> and all the time, the chief minister of, of uh, Madhya Pradesh was sitting next to uh, in, my, in our room. He offered 120 acres of land, 60 acres and 60 acres and the, uh, the buffer uh, forest. And then see, and he also showed that there are at least about 1,000 flights every week are, uh, between Chennai to Delhi, um, Hyderabad to Delhi, Cochin to Delhi, Bangalore to Delhi. He said if only 1% of them are hopping flights, the connectivity would improve. Bhopal okay. is, is geographically the heart of the center of the this thing. But it was uh, unfortunate that uh, the connectivity was not uh, very convenient. So, but it's a five-star facility. We fought a battle with uh, uh, and the prime minister was so helpful that uh, almost a hundred crores was spent on that. Make full utilization of it, make that the center, not that everybody should go to Bhopal. They can come to Delhi, they can come to any part of this country and it is under the umbrella and the ages of that institution that you should work. And I appeal to the Chief Justice of India to revitalize that institution and push it to its potential, achieve its potential. And, uh, and it's a great institution. Once Mr. Lahoti, Chief Justice, invited me to head that institution. I told him I have left the judiciary, I have not entered that building again. So I, I, I thanked him. Uh, he recall, he may recall what he once told me that uh, he said, in fact, one uh, American Supreme Court that said that the, the best campus anywhere in the world. Yes, it's not the really finest beautiful. campus anywhere in the world. In, even in Reno, which I have visited, is, is not comparable uh, to. Oh. Uh, to uh, Bhopal Academy. You push it, uh, put them into test and let them come out with this the kind of thing. And then another 30% of the judicial work must be online. So 60% of judicial work must be online and another 40% or 30%, which is essential work of the orality of the process. That must be recognized as my submission to you. Thank and uh, then See, there is one technical issue. I've made a study of that when I was in the high court. What time in, a, in the life of a litigation is consumed by bringing alerts and record? The delay in courts is such that one or the other party will die. You can assume that. And the, the, tracing the legal reference and record, thanks to the delays of the system, parties will live their down life on the exit. 
the bringing them, record them, trace them, find out, serve them, it's impossible. Please consider this idea. Yes. If you can, the plaintiff, you will say, in the event of my death, so and so will represent my state, is my nominee, the administration policy is uh, my nominee, he will continue the litigation. He will continue the litigation. The alerts can come on record on their own. But it's not necessary for the man to search for the progeny, uh, progeny of the man and then stress them and get and it's a terrible thing. I've been a trial lawyer myself. I know what it is to bring a, a legal representative on record. Please have a nominee system. The advocate must say I will appear in the event of uh, the party's death, I will appear for them. It's optional for the LRs to come on record. This is a very convenient thing. And secondly, uh, you see, many of the actions, mortgage suits, landlord, admitted landlord tenancy, you have a proceeding for uh, making a decree in ISI and say, ask them to show cause why it should not be made absolute. Otherwise, yeah, 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 not a, a, a eviction proceeding with a protected tenant is an ejection action in law. It will take 10 years. I, I don't know at that rate uh, what will be the nature of uh, confidence people have in the system. We still believe that people still have faith in our system. And uh, that is the problem which is coming in the way of reforms. Uh, I think what we can and, do is, uh, what your suggestion, we can tabulate and uh, give it to my Lord, the Chief Justice, and we'll see what we can best do as a pilot project, we can definitely... No, no but one out. thing, uh, see, this is a number of kind of actions, for example, the promissory note, a yes. negotiable instrument, the sanctity of a presumption of the negotiable instrument, right? a promissory note, well, you see why a decree nicely is made, why it should not be made absolute, if you give it, it will focus Short the right... The, yes. right yes. Focus on the right element in the litigation. Every litigation need not have this kind of full adversarial scope. And uh, every adversarial system has in inquisitorial elements in it. There are some, I mean, I'm not saying that these are the exhaustive kind of To explore this thing, just have an expert committee with systems. Not lawyers, lawyers, of course, you must take and you must put something in, into their pocket also as by way of additional income. Otherwise, yes. nobody will, uh, will uh, do charity for the sake of litigants. Yes. We'll some of the uh, things we have to do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And so the technology, technology is concerned. Technology is concerned. It is yes. going to be tomorrow, if not today. Yes. It will be leaps and bounds. Yes. And. Uh, See, you can have uh, Chief Justice Ramana in, he may sit in his own place, but his three three dimensional figure <laughs> will all come in fact. This is the appear uh, like uh, the rishis that were descending from the, the heavens and the earth. And I think in the last election, somebody tried it also. Yes, the hologram. hologram. Tried it also. Yeah. The holographic three dimensional yes. figure. Now the science of haptics has made it possible to shake hands with them. Yes. Shake hands with and and uh, uh, robotic surgeries. A surgeon sitting in in a console in New York conducts an operation on a patient on the surgical table in in Paris. Yes. This so we definitely yes. so definitely implement. Just as Laudi was mentioning is that about this virtual. So sorry. I, I think uh, we have taken undue advantage of the presence of the Chief Justice of India to put in a lot of... You see, people say, you, people no, I, say I, I, if you keep your mind too open. People say, if you keep your mind too open, people put a lot of rubbish into it. <laughs> and and <laughs> I just... just I said it. Not, so so I, I, it may be something... <laughs> So I don't know, after the courts reopen, we'll see all the chief justices and judges in three dimensions, I don't know. But apart from the lighter way, what I wanted to ask this Lahoti was, now this, this uh, for the immediate problem is the Zoom hearings, the WebEx hearings, the virtual hearings. I spoke to a lot of people around and I find that there's a lot of difficulty in connectivity in the district courts and subordinate courts. High courts and Supreme Courts are working well, we are all used to it. What, what is your view? How do you sort you, out this you, issue of virtual hearings my, in the Microsoft, Microsoft is uh, donating the systems to education institutes. We won't see them. We'll do that, sir. We'll do government, that. government, 
government uh, communication systems they they were all wrong. i mean i'm not blaming anybody there is there is security element the cost element there is uh, so many other uh, elements in the thing you can't simply generalize and say uh, national informatics center i the one who pursued them the first uh, access to case data was initiated by me in the first week of my taking charge in 93 Uh, and i inaugurated that uh, console in bangalore where you an ap of 10 rupees you can get the statistics of your case anywhere in the country now it is just a difficult tips see see lahore do you wanted to uh, say about this virtual courts of course you can you allowed to have your liberty to criticize me uh, this idea <laughs> <laughs> sir 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 kind ask you please hold your hands you take see the advantage of virtual hearing in physical hearing you could have been stopped in virtual hearing you cannot be stopped <laughs> <laughs> sir 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 i can't i can't afford to criticize you sir i follow every word what you say sir your word is a final dicta i am um, sir datar i have only two points to say yes, Very, yes, in two minutes yes number yes. one you can't stop the flow of the event of the wave the time for which has come <laughs> now it's day of modern technology you can't resist it you must adopt it and you must flow with the wind one two technology has got so many advantages may I say one thing there sir it is victor hugo said no army can stop an idea whose time has come true yes sir that side sir Sir, um, I couldn't. Sir, sir, that side, sir, that was Victor Hugo. I couldn't quote it fully, right, sir? Victor Hugo. Sir, the second point is, yes. we need not be at all apprehensive. I can vouch for it. I think Brother Justice Ravindran, Justice Brother Sri Krishna will vouch for it. For seventeenth March, twenty twenty, was the last hearing which I held physical hearing. Ever since then, for the last fourteen months, my hundred percent hearings in arbitration are online. Most complicated issues, ONGC, underwater disputes, uh, port disputes, dredging, building the port, airline disputes, courier disputes, all these disputes, BHL disputes. Involving highly sophisticated questions relating to technology, where the drawings are one meter by one meter, and we are examining. I have recorded all evidence online. So I have cross examination also online, sir. We cross examination online, online, and <clears throat> arguments extending over fifteen twenty days, all online without any difficulty. and awards pronounced it is not at all difficult if there are any difficulty they can be solved india is a vast country the problem of connectivity can be solved can be solved the the, the commercial operators will be coming gladly in forefront and ahead to join hands with the judiciary and to provide the services where they can reach the farthest corners farthest corners and can provide services two third not only three dimension now four dimension five dimension is coming up so and and uh, so far as the uh, honorable justice bentiger has said that uh, 15 pages of arguments um, will not match one shrug of shoulders now the shrug of shoulders can be virtually seen all the expressions on the faces can be read so it is not at all difficult this i am telling from my own personal experience and lucy see one more thing one more thing yeah, how that. much cost effective it is cost in effective. all the matters in which i am holding virtual hearing uh, this uh, some psus have issued circulars saying that they prefer online hearing every online hearing saves at this 5 lakhs rupees per day to each of the parties online hearing is highly cost effective mm-hmm. and time saving if i have to participate in an arbitration hearing at some place i have to leave my place at 1 and 1/2 hours in advance and reach that place local local 
now I, 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 I come just five minutes before. Join the hearing, finish the hearing and leave in five minutes. It saves time, saves cost, and is equally effective. This can be done in the courts also without any difficulty. Only thing is we shall have to get used to it. This is all the observation, but I wanted to see. Mr. Uh, Shri you would like to say something? Yeah, I, I agree. In fact, I am a votary of this, of course. For a man like Justice Lauti, I am a little computer illiterate, so I'll find it a little difficult. Uh, the point is, you know, in the courts, all judges are not equally capable of computers, work on computers. All staff is not equally comfortable. All lawyers are not. Therefore, till people get used to it, you should continue the hybrid process, not in the manner that you suggested, Arvin, not to do this. You have, you make it obvious to me. I am a lawyer. I want to conduct the case. Are you comfortable with this? Go on, I learn. If you want to do it physically, I'll do it physically. So we have these both systems running parallelly and till one time they can be merged and then can be made completely virtually. Now, I don't keep much talk about this witness's expression not visible and all that, that we know how much of trial court does really does that. I mean, <laughs> our trial judges don't really bother about the witness. And the criminal, criminal are the witness. It's all theory, yes. In practice, we don't find it at all. All of us have been lawyers, all of us have been judges, and the High Court Chief Justice and Supreme Court judges. Now, therefore, and particularly, all this is irrelevant when you are dealing with the High Court or the Supreme Court. You are not concerned with witnesses. You are concerned with lawyers, their facial expressions, and the judges' facial expressions, which are easily visible on the. I mean, I, if I am arguing before a judge and I find that the, his uh, face tells me that I am not cutting guys, I'll cut short. But that is very visible. On speaker, and I can see in the expanded view of your face. So, I, but only thing is this: till people get used to it at all levels. Continue the process simultaneously. Otherwise, there will be infinite chaos. So I take it that your your views are that since all of you have spent all your judicial life in physical hearing and now we've gone to the virtual age, you say that virtual should eventually be the rule and physical should be Absolutely. exception. Maybe in batch cases. Or... It is like saying which language should be there. Therefore, English has continued with Hindi simultaneously continuing. Someday we'll switch over, but let it continue till people get used to it. Thank you so much. In fact, we wanted to have one session on PIL, but we are running out of time. We already... Dr. Yes, Just yes, I sir. want to give please, you... Please, sir, please. I think just uh, I want to, for the sake of uh, clearing and giving information, uh, my Secretary General has furnished this information. Yes. Sir. After this pandemic, we have worked 187 days hearing, almost average of 11 benches, and uh, taken up the matters, different matters, and uh, the total matters which we have disposed of so far in these 287 uh, days, hearing, including hearing, is 92,312 hearings has taken place. And uh, the disposal is already have published in the website. Apart from that, we have, uh, I interacted with all the Chief Justices of High Court uh, recently, two days continuously, and by virtual mode only. In the meetings, all the meetings, all the Chief Justices have suggested, requested two, three things. One is about uh, vaccination of the lawyers, judges, and their families, and the court staff. Okay. Second thing is that uh, some assistance to the councils and all that. Third is the most important thing is this connectivity issue, particularly yes. in the rural areas and yes. areas. Yes. So immediately I requested, I thought of initially calling these uh, companies, telecom companies and uh, request them to provide uh, uh, boost the systems, particularly in rural areas and hill areas and providing some centers exclusively to uh, provide facility to the rural lawyers to address the courts. But instead of my taking up that uh, thing, I thought that I requested the minister, uh, law minister come telecommunication, Mr. Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, to call these players, that particularly the telecom companies, telecom. and the corporate social responsibility are aware. Yes. They, can, they can provide in some taluk centers and district centers some, some facility so yes. the buyers can come there and they can use this system.
particularly unencrypted internet yes. uh, to address the course this yes. request i have made let me hope that they will take up the matter and yes. otherwise i will take up some request the companies once again myself sir yes this is for the information thank you so much and in fact uh, there's one thing that what is the next thing is the digital divide those who are access to digital facilities those who don't have access to digital that is the major is going to be the main issue hey, a very good lecture by Mr. Farid Zakaria. He says now the problem is not the have and have nots. Those who have access to digital and those who don't have access, that I, is going to be the. I I I suggest I told the very same thing. Now yes. if you don't if you don't care, take care of these uh, liars who doesn't have the specialty of the technology, you are uh, one generation liars of the rural areas will be out of the out of the system because they can't afford. They are doesn't not they are not getting briefs. They are not getting money. In addition to that, they don't have the advantage of the technology. technology. So you are completely taking out of these liars from the stream, which is very dangerous. Yes, this is yes. The concern of me. Yes, yes, sir. The very serious problem. I think we will, I'll have to stop now. And now I'll request the star of the day's function, this is Ravindran, whose book we have all. Uh, uh, in fact, in fact, this this uh, lot of topics are worth debating. But since we're running out of time, I would now request Justice Ravindran to say give us few remarks about. Uh, his book is about today's function and what he thinks should be the road ahead. Mr. Ravindran, could you please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I want to share two thoughts about the two subjects that were mentioned. Before reading formally what I have written as my response, the first is uh, elaborate discussions were held about the age of retirement of uh, high court judges and Supreme Court judges. I totally agree that it should be the same. It should be 65 or it can be 68. But the experience, the benefit of experience, which is available by extending the age of retirement should not be restricted or limited only to the Supreme Court judges and high court judges, but it should be extended to the subordinate judiciary also in the sense, you see, we have 35 Supreme Court judges and 1,080 High Court judges. We have 22,000 subordinate judges who also gain a lot of experience by having worked for 20 years or 25 years. Why at the, at the uh, you know, uh, uh, when they are at their zenith, why send them away at 58 or 60? Why not make it 62? It need not be the same as uh, the Supreme Court judges or High Court judges. But when we are considering or talking of increasing the age of retirement of the higher judiciary, we should also consider a corresponding increase in the age of retirement of subordinate judiciary, which will also make it more attractive for persons to join the subordinate judiciary. This is one point I want to say about uh, the uh, delay aspect. The, in regard to technology, I fully agree and I respectfully agree that, you see, we cannot stop the digitization and uh, the more and more virtual hearings will take place. Of course, the best is first restricted to the Supreme Court and High Court see how it functions, remove all the glitches and bugs. And once the system has stabilized, then slowly take it to the trial courts, that is the district judiciary. But one, I want to flag one human issue, which is causing a lot of heartburn, which also should simultaneously be considered. What is that? See, the distance till now, it was all physical. Because it was physical, we had a Supreme Court bar. We had a High Court bar. If, he's a law, law, if it is a tribunal of company law, there was a company law tribunal bar. If there was a telecom tribunal, there was a telecom tribunal bar, High Court bar, district bar, magistrate's court bar, specialized bars. Now, because of this digitization, because of these virtual hearings, the Supreme Court lawyers are arguing before all the high courts and the high court lawyers are arguing before the district courts. This has uh, led to some kind of apprehension in the mind of the lower rung lawyers that their bread and butter is being taken away. 
it is you see for an argument it can also be said it has opened up for a district court lawyer to straight away argue in the high court or supreme court that is also positive that is the positive side but that has not happened they are afraid and it is while taking while discussing and debating the virtual hearing we should also take note of the apprehensions of a large number of bar and we should provide some provision should be made otherwise you see that there will be discontent and there may be some kind of uh, inconvenience to majority members of the bar and uh, the honorable chief justice was mentioning about how in taluka places and other places the one entire generation will miss the bus so let us the, the there is a need to take all it is not uh, sufficient if one section is served or one section is provided while virtual hearing is there to stay let us do it in a manner that it does not affect the larger section of the members of the bar this is my request for as far as the second subject is concerned now let me formally move to my response uh, honorable justice nv ramana the honorable chief justice of india Reverend Justice Venkata Chalaya Ji, Bishma Pitapa, Respected Justice Lahoti, Respected Justice Sri Krishna, Eminent Jurist and Senior Advocate Mr. Datar, Mr. Surendr Malik, Mr. Sumit Malik, and the the team consisting of uh, Miss Batija and Mr. Indulia, and my friends who are. Uh, participating in this webinar i thank the honorable chief justice for finding time during his busy schedule to release my book anomalies in law and justice i also thank the distinguished panelists and the moderator for sparing their valuable time to join the panel discussions i feel humbled and honored by the kind words of the chief justice and the distinguished panelists in fact i detect bias which in my favor which should not be there because these are all eminent judges the articles in this book are based on some lectures on law and justice given by me in the national judicial academy and the state judicial academies and some memorial lectures a constitutional democracy requires institutional safeguards for proper functioning and survival judiciary is one of the institutions that play a key role in making democracy and rule of law meaningful and effective like all other constitutional institutions the effectiveness of judiciary as an institution depends upon the persons who control and operate it as also the trust and confidence they command from the citizens of the country such trust and confidence can develop only when the citizens understand the working of the judiciary and appreciate the need for independence integrity and impartiality of the judges though much is written about the functioning and working of the higher judiciary very little is written about the problems and issues faced by the subordinate judiciary as i mentioned some time back as against 35 judges in the supreme court and 1080 judges in the high court there are more than 22000 judges in the subordinate judiciary as far as the common man is concerned they are the face of the judiciary it is not the supreme court or the high court any discussion about delays and access to justice primarily relate to the subordinate judiciary there is therefore an urgent need to discuss and debate upon their problems their stressful working conditions and the safeguards needed to maintain their independence integrity and detachment some of these aspects are discussed in these articles in that context the articles also examine what is required of judges what is expected of judges and what is to be delivered by the judges i would say the object of these articles is to demystify several aspects of law justice and judiciary and to remove some of the misconceptions about the functioning of the judiciary by examining the basic concepts of law and justice and their interplay these articles 
also attempt to discuss ways and means of improving the services rendered by the judiciary and strengthening the functioning of parliamentary democracy i have endeavored to use jargon free language so that a neither a legal background nor a law dictionary is needed to understand the matters dealt with in the book while drawing attention to some of the problems faced by judges in improving the justice delivery the article suggests some solutions for some problems by considering what the governments can do what the supreme court can do what the high courts can do what the judges themselves can do what the bar the media and litigants can do to improve the system to improve the justice delivery the fact that the book discusses the problems regarding the functioning of the judiciary does not mean that judiciary is irretrievably engulfed by those problems i am not a pessimist like justice michael kirby who when asked about the future of the courts famously responded what makes you think that they do have a future i firmly believe that the judiciary has a future that to a robust future it only requires the judges to pull their socks up and show more commitment and concern for the cause of justice the object of my book is not to criticize but to make the stakeholders think debate and attempt to find solutions to improve the performance of the judiciary so that it can serve the public better with improved credibility i would humbly adopt what justice home said about his criticism of law to what i have said about judiciary and judges i quote this is what uh, great justice home said i trust that no one will understand me to be speaking with disrespect of the law because i criticize it so freely i venerate the law and especially our system of law but one may criticize even what one reveres law is the business to which my life is devoted and i should show less than devotion if i did not do what in me lies to improve it i and i respectfully say and by adopting the words that if what i have said hurts anybody please don't feel hurt because my intention is not to hurt anyone it is only to see that the conditions are improved so that judiciary functions as a uh, better institution with better credibility in citizens of india i thank you i thank you all and i thank mr surender malik mr sumit malik and their dedicated ebc team for their efforts to bring out this book in a wonderful manner thank you all thank you sir uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of this event i would like to thank everyone who contributed to its success many thanks first of all to the distinguished panelists honorable chief justice nv ramanna uh, thank you so much sir for your insightful speech i would also like to thank justice lohoti justice shri krishna ji and justice venkat chalia ji for the very thought provoking speeches that were made by them and also for the for the, for them taking part in the panel discussion next i would like to thank uh, shri arvind datter for being an excellent moderator and for asking such insightful questions the entire panel discussion was a treat to the ears and an excellent learning experience for all the attendees mm -hmm. we, all, we would like to thank you not just for the discussion but also for going through the book and for giving your valuable feedback the production of a work of such a nature cannot be of merely one person our uh, thanks goes to the entire team was <coughs> still lost was disconnected we lost you nala folks miss indulia you can say the last word and complete it in place of miss batija so we just everyone. want to so yes uh, the, in the end she wanted to conclude that we want to thank our entire team and everyone who has joined with us today and uh, and making this uh, launch successful and congratulations to you uh, with this uh, we would like to end the discussion uh, uh, with due permission from uh, everyone thank you thank you namaskar Thank you. Thank you.
we 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 close we close with a vote of thanks to the one who has proposed a vote of thanks <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, I will hold the book. Yes. Thank you, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, thank you so much for all the help in getting this program together. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for all the participants who were attending. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to all the participants. Thank you.